This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It's Alex Bennett's time now for the ramble. This goes on until midnight, whether you like it or not. Eastern Daylight Time. It's about five minutes past ten here on the east coast of the United States and around the world. Well, wherever you happen to be, if it's the same time as it is here, I mean, you know, relatively, then you're uh, you're okay. You're cool. You can uh, you can listen to us live. Otherwise, this is a recording. And for those of you watching us on Facebook tonight, we got something a little extra special. Yeah, we have uh, one of the people we like to talk to from time to time, and he's here video-wise as well. Ladies and gentlemen, on your screen right now, live from San Francisco. In fact, prove it's San Francisco. Show him San Francisco. Show him out your window. There we go. There's San Francisco. And there's the ocean. So you're in the Sunset District. Yeah. Yeah. So you can drive right to the ocean, to the beach. Baker Beach. Baker Beach? Is uh, that what's out ocean there? Ocean Beach. Yeah. Ocean Beach. Yeah. <laughs> Cleverly. But the Sunset District, you can never see the damn sunset because of the fog. Well, they said the sun never sets down there. It's just always, <laughs> always dark. Might as well call it the Unicorn District. The, you know something? I, I grew up in the fog. You know, and I love the fog. There's just something about the fog. It is so romantic. It is so. What can we say about the fog in San Francisco? Je ne sais quoi. Je ne sais quoi. Ladies and gentlemen, Will Durst, as you know, <laughs> it, is the political go to guy that we go to as a guy. As, as I'm, the, I'm the guy to go to, too. It, it, as well. Yes. And. and uh, uh, he's been doing political comedy as long as it hasn't been fashionable. So, uh, 74. 74. The, yeah. Was there a time when you were in a political comic that you just decided to go, uh, you know, funny thing was, happened at home last night, uh, blah, 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 that kind of thing? Yeah, there was, uh, when I first started out in Milwaukee, um, I would have some political jokes in my act. Because, you know, it was Watergate and uh, the end of Vietnam and all the president's men and Nixon resigning. And, you know, it was the clash between the cultures. So my first political joke on stage was uh, this was Nixon had just resigned in August of 74. Mm -hmm. And then he went into the hospital, was kind of seen as a ploy for sympathy. So my first political joke was. When the going gets tough, the tough get phlebitis. Because <laughs> phlebitis back then was a funny word. Yeah, yeah. It still is, actually, if you think about it. I, really, I think so. Yeah. So your first joke, politically, was a phlebitis joke. It was a Nixon joke. Yeah. It was a Nixon joke. And you got many more jokes out of Nixon, did you? No. No, and Gerald Ford was tough because there was no 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 there there. He was and he that, was kind of he was kind of just a dull president. He didn't have a real uh, heavy personality. About the only thing that Saturday Night Live could parody was him stumbling. Yeah, and, and was he was it. probably the most athletically, you know, him and Reagan, and I imagine Teddy Roosevelt, a couple of other ones. But he was, I mean, he was all Big Ten. He was a starting offensive lineman at uh, Michigan, so I mean, he was he was you know an athlete, but but you're right, Ford was uh, hard to satirize. Jimmy Carter, you felt bad because you know picking on him, it was like kicking a puppy. Well, he was a nice guy, you know. Yeah. He was a decent human being. He was a decent human he, being. Even, I don't know if he was a nice guy. You know, some but guys, he was a decent human some being. Some guys are presidents and they're kind of assholes, and then they, it, when, in their in their dotage, they become nice guys. He was a guy who was nice from the beginning. Maybe not the most competent president we had, but you know, almost too nice to be president. Well, he was elected on an anti-Washington mandate. You know, it was after Watergate and and. Ford pardoned Nixon, and we never really get to find out. 
So he was. So he brought all his Georgia boys in with him, and said, "Stand, stand back, everybody. I'm going to get stuff done." And everybody in Washington said, "Oh yeah, <laughs> go ahead, try." And he couldn't. He couldn't get anything done because he didn't suck up to the right people. Why? Wow. You know, kind of what Trump is going through. But Reagan brought political comedy back because he had a sense of humor about himself. He looked like he could take it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so doing jokes about him, uh, uh, so that's that's when I came into full blossom, was the 80 election, and then the 80, when, when he was, of course, then he was shot in March of 81. And that made it hard. Yeah. Yeah, because he was a, a, you know, sympathy uh, guy. But we never got to see the real Reagan as president. You know, in California, you guys got to see Reagan as governor, and you might have. I wasn't, believe it or not, I wasn't in California when he was governor. I oh, was really? in New York. I, wasn't I was in New York. Oh, well, that's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you don't, you don't know either. Yeah. It would have been interesting to see what kind of a president he would have been if he hadn't been shot. You know, this seventy-two-year-old man shot, uh, which is never good. So yeah, yeah. Now he got shot. How soon into his uh, term? Two months. Two months. Was that two months into the presidency? March thirtieth, and he was inaugurated on January twentieth. Jesus, it's taken us that long to hate Trump that much. You know, I mean, how, how does somebody? One hundred and fifty days. You no, know, well, I remember he did it because of uh, Jody Foster, didn't he? It was Mark David yeah. Chapman? Was it? He was sh- showing off for. Uh, 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 for Jody Foster, no, it was Hinckley. Hinckley, excuse me. Uh, Chapman was Lennon. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was Hinckley, and and he just he, he, he there, yeah. He, he said the reason why he did it was he like loved Jody Foster or something like that. Yeah, it was. It never made much sense. It was. It was one of those assassinations that wasn't politically motivated. It was just go get the yeah, object. What was? And what was Mark David Chapman's deal with Lenin? Why why did he shoot Lenin? Uh, I I think that had to do with basically obsession, you know, just obsession with the, with the with, with Lenin and with his notoriety, and it, it's never really been truly explained what went on in his mind that said I got to kill a guy who I just got an autograph from, you know, that I just that I loved and adored and came all the way, I think he came from Hawaii or someplace like that, to see. And then he shoots him. I love you know. Stephen Pearl's line. If he had aimed just 24 inches to the left, he would have gotten a 30-day suspended sentence. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, that was a shocker. That was a big shocker. That was a big shocker for me. I had just yeah. gone out to California and was working at the, the Camel. And uh, I had uh, decided that I just, I don't know, I wanted to go back to New York. I was missing New York. Oh, really? The, well, New York is addicting. And so, yeah, 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 you, yeah. so you get an addiction to New York. And I, I so I went on. and told yeah. my boss, I said, I'm quitting as of uh, X date or whatever. And he said, okay. And then later on, I think two, a day later or something like that, Lennon was shot. And then all of a sudden, I perceived of New York as Death City. Uh, and I went back into my boss and I said, do you mind if I stick around? And he said, sure, fine, here's a raise. Oh, no kidding? <laughs> yeah, they gave me a raise. <laughs> so uh, I, that's how I stayed in San Francisco. Otherwise, I would have gone back to New York and become a non-entity. How long were, how, how were the ratings? What? It, it, where? In San, at Camel. At Camel would be very good for me. Yeah, no, I hit the highest ratings they had ever gotten in the morning. And I wasn't doing shit then. I mean, I wasn't at my peak. I didn't get to be into my peak until we actually got to, we got to the quake and then we went on to Live 105. And, and uh, but I never saw ratings like that again in San Francisco. They well, amazing. Was, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, you were, you, you brought personality to the morning show and well I mean they had it with Sherwood and stuff but yeah. you had a rock and roll sensibility rather than you know the 50s yeah, cool that yeah. Had sensibility and then and then it changed how did you hook into the whole comedy thing what happened was um, there was a comedian who wanted to come on wait a minute 
I'm trying to remember. I think it was. I think it was that my boss said, "There's this comedian who's kind of a friend of the radio station. Would you like to have him on as a guest?" Uh, and I said, "Okay, who's that?" He said, "Bobby Slayton." And so Slayton came on, and we did some stuff. And because I always had an affinity towards comedy, anyway, we got along great. And I knew how to play the straight man, and it just worked great. Right, right. And so I said to him, "Do you know any other people?" And so I think the second guy I had on was Dr. Gonzo. Oh, no kidding. So yeah. this was 80? This is 79? This is 80? Yeah, I think it's 80. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I forget my dates now. It gets weird. Uh, and uh, then uh, they, Gonzo suggested, uh, I think, Kramer. So Kramer came on, and then there was Pollock, and then there was, and one thing led to another. And before I knew it, every day there was a comic on. And, and and that's how I let things happen in my career. And that was organically. Yeah. Organically. You know, I didn't I didn't wake up one morning and say, you know, it'd be a good idea to have comics. Who 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 can we get? Right, you right. know. Wouldn't it be fun to have comics on every morning? No, that didn't uh, that didn't seem to make much sense at all. Uh and uh so consequently, uh I it, it all happened very organically. Never so by you're still design. in touch with Slayton? Oh, yeah, I saw Slayton. Uh, we went to see uh, a Broadway show together about a couple of weeks ago. Oh, what you see? I went to see Beautiful, the Carol King musical. He loves oh, it because it's all about, you know, the music at that time. He's seen okay. it before two times, and so he took us, my, my wife and I, and uh, his uh, one of his brothers and his, wa that, his wife, and we all went, and he got his front row seats. Oh, uh, wow. Which I don't like because you get to see all the wires, you know. Also, you're looking like well, that. You yeah. know what it is? On Broadway, you know where they're wearing their microphones now? On their forehead. They all look like they, they're Raja from India. They got, they, <laughs> they got a microphone coming down right to the, glued to their forehead, and then the wiring is like is across their hairline or whatever under a wig they might be wearing. Yeah, yeah. And from the fifth, fifth row, you'd never see that. But no, in the first, first row, row you're looking at it, man. You know. But anyway, though, that's when I saw Slayton last. And Slayton and I still, you know, talk all the time. You know, so. Uh, he's, yeah, but you were at Camel till when? I was at KML. God, I think I think it was two years. It was about two years. And then I got bought bought out by uh, the Quake, and I went over to the Quake because they offered me a lot of the ton of money. It's funny. There was a there was a deal. They, they couldn't come to me directly that station because they could get sued for trying to poach. Uh, Tamper. Yeah. Damn. So they had to go through a third party, and the third party was Bob Pittman, who now is the head of iHeartRadio and started oh MTV later uh, at, at, at oh, that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And when I got a call, I said Bob Pittman wants to talk to you. I went. He wants me for MTV. And no, he was asking me, he says, I've got these friends who are starting a radio station in San Francisco, and they can't come to you directly, so I'm saying, would you be interested in talking to them? And I said, yeah. And so they called me, and they offered me like $50,000 a year more than I was getting where I was. And uh, how could I say no to that? You know, no. So I, I did. Away. I didn't. Did you ask him about uh, MTV? I don't think I ever asked him about MTV. No, that, mm. I, 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 I no, I didn't. Although I, you know, I was. Believe it or not, most people don't know this. I was on MTV when it first went on the air. I was on it for a year. Oh no, kidding! What happened was they used to do these reports. Uh, here's so and so in San Francisco, California. Uh, reporting on what's happening with the music scene there. And here's so-and-so in Chicago, and here's so-and-so in L.A. And what it was, it was the same group doing all the reports. So they made me the L.A. reporter from San Francisco. I was doing the voiceovers on it. And it was, hi, I'm Alex Bennett, and we're here in L.A. with MTV News and blah, 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 blah and here's what's happening in, in L.A. And I would go walk right across the street from Live, 10, uh, from Live 105, and th there was uh, Video West who was doing these things. I and I would Video do them. West. So I was on every day on MTV for the first year it was on the air. 
And then at the end of the first year, they decided to stop that particular segment, okay? Uh, and that was about the time that they went on in San Francisco. They, yeah. the MTV had not been on in San Francisco. Yeah. And so when I tell people that I was with MTV, they go, sure you were. You know, where's the proof? But the funny part was MTV held a uh, thing in, in the South Bay because they didn't get into San Francisco, but they were getting into the South Bay. So they held a big kind of, here's MTV's coming and here's what it's going to be. And they held this uh, big uh, party with capers and everything else, you know. And then they showed a demo of MTV. And there's Mark Goodman and all the other, the originals, hi, and they, you know, this is what MTV is, blah, blah, blah. And now let's go to uh, Los Angeles for this report with Alex Bennett. And I had done an audition for them. And that was the audition I had done for them. And everybody turned to me and said, you work for MTV? <laughs> and I went, I guess I do now. And that's how I found out they had hired me to do the LA things. <laughs> I didn't know it till I saw the demo. Nobody bothered telling me. Nobody you. bothered telling me, no. So I did it for a year. So I'm, uh, I'm, I was well, uh, originally on MTV the first year it was on. Oh, that's great. Yeah. I think I got paid $25 a segment, something like yeah. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. big money, big money, big bucks. Well, listen, let's. Uh, we're 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 too much about me. And we're no, no, about... I'm more. I'm. You never talk about yourself, and the other people aren't interested. What do you mean I don't to... talk about myself? That's all I talk about. If you listen to me, we're gonna go long on this interview today because I got I got I got we got to get to the politics. We're already 14 minutes into this thing. We we're not even into the politics yet. Uh, Donald Trump and his executive orders. He's He's an executive ordery kind of a guy. Yeah, but didn't he learn and, that since he is undoing all of Obama's executive orders, that you really don't want executive orders because they can all be undone by somebody else? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a there's an executive order that uh, Democrats and Republicans kind of play uh, tennis with, and it's uh, it's the gag order for for people that we support overseas, like Planned Parenthood. And if they mention abortion, uh, they, they get all the money cut off. And that's what Republicans sign that uh, like the first day, and Democrats get rid of it like the first day. And it's it's this bouncing ball that, uh, that they play with. It, it's actually African women's lives that they're playing with, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's one example of an executive order that constantly gets uh, bounced back and forth. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, th these things get uh, so an executive order, like all the stuff that uh, Obama did with executive orders, is what uh, uh, Trump, Trump is undoing. He couldn't undo yeah. it if it were an act of Congress, for instance. You know. Well, an executive order is uh, also uh, has to be. You know, okayed by the courts, it can it can be deemed. Uh, this is you can't make that an executive order. That needs to be legislation. The court can say that, or the court can say, uh, no, you got to have Congress cover that one, or the court can say well, that's unconstitutional. So a lot of uh, a lot of executive orders uh, have been uh, thrown out. Yeah, Emancipation yeah. Proclamation was an executive order. Was it really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there have been 13,000 executive orders. I, I know this because I'm writing an article. Uh, George Washington did eight of them. And uh, um, uh, what's his name? FDR did 3,000 executive orders. Who is, who's the king? It, the, uh, FDR. But he had 12 years. Yeah. So if you cut, had, the, if you cut his term in half, that's... You know, per term, that's probably... No, it averages 307 a year. That's still a lot. You know, a couple of, a couple of them have had 1,000. And, and Trump is on pace for 92 in a year. 92 a year. 92 a year? Which yeah. is the most since do you, Truman. Do you ever notice when he signs them, how he signs them? He's got a great signature, doesn't he? he well, no, you know what it is? It's an ostentatious no. signature. It's like, it like 
everybody wonders why um, uh, John Hancock's signature is so remembered on the Constitution. Very few people remember John Hancock. Okay, what did he do? what did he do? Who was he? Where did he live? What what's his history? I don't know. All we know is there's an insurance company named after him because that flamboyant, bigger right than in the middle man. Right, right in, in the, the middle, middle and bigger dude. than anybody else's. And that's exactly what Trump does. It's like a rip, 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 rip. I don't even know how it says Donald Trump, but it looks like, uh, it, it actually looks like a graph of, a seismic graph of an earthquake, you know? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And, it looks like the, the San Andreas Fault Quake yeah. from, 90, from 89. And he loves then holding it up and showing it to everybody. Shows it left, shows it right, shows it, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, the, the, he's he he he's ostentatious that way, you know. But it it doesn't prove anything. Just because your signature is bigger doesn't mean it's better. It's <laughs> it's, it's all about Donald. It's all about Donald. It's, it's all, Donald's world. We just live it in. Now you know there are all these people who are yelling and screaming, uh, impeachment, 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 impeachment. It's not going to happen. No. You know. The, the, the best you can do is put a, uh, an arrow in his foot, you know, slow him down a little bit, you know. Well, he, he's doing that himself, you know. I mean, he's had his two Muslim bands blocked. He's not getting a lot done. He's, uh, he's, he's shooting himself in the foot. I mean, when he, when he called the, the House replacement for the Affordable Care Act, he called it mean. Well, dude, that was you out in the Rose Garden celebrating with all those white guys. You know exactly. What I mean? So he, he is he's stepping on his own dick is what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and But uh, now, today, uh, we're doing this on the 20th of, uh, in case I ever replay this, the 20th of June, uh, in the year of our Lord, 2017. Seven. Uh, we now have a very close situation with Russia. You know? I mean, this is getting a little scary. And I don't know if he's up to the task. Well, uh, Russia seems to have so many other problems going on that, uh, yeah, it, I mean, in terms of meshing with us, it just it's not a good fit it's not a putin putin doesn't do partnerships you know and i don't see how trump doesn't get that i don't i don't know what the deal is i don't know if he thinks putin is this rich guy or he loves the power that putin has or he loves the the fact that he can say i want this done and it gets done and it doesn't matter if there are opponents or uh, if there are people in the way, they, they just clear away. Now, I, 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 wonder if Put, I wonder if Putin is there saying, shoot down that American plane or that American drone or whatever, or does he just leave it to his field commanders to make a decision? Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I would imagine that he would set the parameters and then give them individual you know, on a case by case basis, make a decision. Yeah. But the, yeah, don't piss anybody off unless you feel that it's you know it's okay to piss somebody. Did off. you see the Stone interviews with Putin? No, I didn't. How were you, they? Oh, you've got to watch them. Oh, this is must watch TV. Really? To begin with, I don't like Stone. I've never liked Stone, but nevertheless, as an interviewer, I felt he did a pretty good job. Most American journalists didn't think he did a good job because he didn't try to be the hero. He just tried to have a conversation with this guy. And the guy so liked having a conversation with him, he got 20 hours out of him. 20 hours, wow. Yeah. And he, in fact, he takes him into the war room and shows him how it works. You know? Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it, it is fascinating and he comes off you know we never ever have any other image of, uh, of of Putin but as a very dogmatic stern looking individual and when he talks of course Russian's a very strident sounding language although I love it it has a romantic feel to it as well but you all you have is this image of him you never get to hear him talk 
And you never get to hear him tell his side of the story. And that's why it's so fascinating. Because somehow, Oliver Stone knew how to pull it out of him. And he did the right thing. It's the thing I've always said when you're interviewing people. Don't get in their face. Make them feel comfortable. Because when you make them feel comfortable, they won't just answer your question. They'll embellish it. And that's exactly what goes on with Putin here. He goes on forever about Crimea and why it happened and the reason for it and uh, why he had to take the, the stand that he took on it and so on and so on. He, he literally is there defending himself in a very rational way. Certainly, let me put it this way. If I had to have somebody be president of the United States, I'd rather have Putin than Trump. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Not that I would want Putin because I think deep down he's evil, but... <laughs> But then again, Trump is stupidly evil. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a dumb quality to, to, to Trump. And uh, you go, my God, I wish I had a guy this efficient as president of the United States. And so the one thing I have to agree with Trump about is when he characterized uh, Putin as being a great leader. And I think he is for his people. I mean, I don't. I, I may not agree with what he does, and he may be terrible, and, and the homosexuals, and the whole thing, whatever. But as a leader for his people, he does care about shepherding the country. Yeah, know, they amazing. love him over there. They're they're big fans. They're yeah. big Putin fans. Last uh, election, sixty five percent, something like that, voted for him. The other, uh, the other thirty five percent got shot. Obviously. But, <laughs> I saw a button the other day. It said, think ahead, impeach Pence. <laughs> you know, no, normally we just do 25 minutes. You mind if we go another 10 or so here? Uh, I'm going to leave in, in 10. Can we do five? Let's do five. Let's do five more. I, I want to get five more out of you. So yeah, where do you think it all stands? We're not going to impeach this. We're not going to be able to impeach this guy. You got At least not during this Congress. Maybe if the Democrats come back in 2018, because the, the House is the one that writes the articles of impeachment and they vote on them. And then the Senate is where they have the trial. Yeah. So right now the Republicans run both of them. And it's doubtful that no matter even if there is a surge election or a wave election, whatever they call it, um, it's doubtful that the Democrats could take over the Senate. So, no, I don't think there is, unless there's huge malfeasance. Is, isn't it interesting, though, that what we're talking about with an impeachment is somebody committing a crime, okay, and that it would depend on whether the Republicans were in or the Democrats are in as to whether it's a crime or not. I mean, isn't yeah. a crime a crime? <laughs> what happens? Crime he, he, crime. he shoots somebody on the street, and the, and the Congress is Republican, so they go, oh, there's no crime. <laughs> you know, a crime is a crime. How about his lawyer, who who came out and said, "Oh, tr uh, Trump, Trump is not being investigated," but he said he was being investigated. It, it, well, that was in response to a newspaper article that had no sourcing. Well, it it no no you're no, missing here's the, the word. He said he was being investigated. <laughs> if things aren't bad, okay. If if everything is good, how come your lawyer just hired a lawyer? <laughs> It's it, the lawyer exponential factor, too. They're lawyering up. Yeah, but his lawyer has a lawyer, and now Trump has something like five lawyers, and Pence just hired a lawyer. I mean, if there's nothing wrong here, why are you hiring lawyers? They have layers of lawyers. La <laughs> layers and layers of lawyers. Amazing. Amazing. So, uh, um, uh, what are we, how many days in now are we? Do you know? About 150. Is it up, uh, up to 150? Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, April 29th was 100. Mm -hmm. May has 31. So that's 132. June. Yeah. June 20th. Yeah. About 150. Let me ask you, as a comedian, is it losing its funny? You know, people. Uh, people are demanding political humor when when because they know that i do political humor there was a big article 
in a newspaper the other day about how the clubs, that people aren't doing political comedy at the clubs because uh, the audiences didn't come there to think. We came here to laugh. And also the club owners are interested in selling liquor. So, but I have found, because people know that I'm a political comic, that they have been seeking me out, that they have been coming to my little shows. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah on purpose, that they need, they need to hear the political comedy. They need to yeah. hear the political comedy. Hey, listen, as always, a delight to talk with you. Uh, love, love Mr. Here. Bennett Schwartzman, thank you so much for letting me play your little reindeer games. No, I hope you'll do it again with us in a couple of weeks. Let's do it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's way bye bye, Will Durst. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we are. There we are. How are you, everybody? Alex Bennett here, ready and willing and able to do uh, our little uh, citizen panel thing. Thanks to Will Durst. Love having him on. Also love the fact that we have video on him. Uh, also, uh, late, uh, probably uh, we have now Ruben does video, and I did an interview today with a friend of mine, Mark Pitta, that I'll probably play on, on Thursday. Uh, that's on video. Uh, the more we can get on video like that, the better it looks terrific and uh, of course i love will and i love what he has to say and uh i uh i i i wish we could have him on more often but he's a busy busy guy okay which is fine with me uh, i'd like to see him be busy all right so i've opened up the phone lines here the skype lines uh the uh and uh, hopefully uh everything will go fine with us this evening uh, our, uh, if you want to find out how to get a hold of us, the best place to go is gabnet.net. That's it, gabnet.net, and it's got all the, the addresses you go to and the phone numbers you use and the Skype numbers and all crap like that, okay? Uh, but uh, you go to gabnet.net, and it'll, it also has a phone number there you can use. In fact, I never can remember phone numbers. Are you ready for that? I own this phone number, and I can't remember it. It, it, the phone number is, are you ready? Stand by. 347-352-0079. Uh, you can use that to call us, and it will call us here on our Skype panel. 347-352-0079. The only problem with it is we can't see you. The other problem is you can't see us. So uh, we're going to have to... Um, uh, uh, let me adjust this camera just a tad. There we go. Uh, you're going to have to, um, uh, it's better if you use Skype. And if you use Skype, uh, you simply uh, load Skype into your machine. You may have it already and not even know it. And our address is GabNet Live. When it says, uh, who do you want to contact, you go GabNet Live. G-A-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. Uh, let me see here. Anything else I want to talk about? I, the lines are open, so I'm just uh, t tap dancing here until people start calling. Uh, it's funny, they used to call the minute we went to the phones, and now they don't anymore. So maybe what I might do is just not go to the phones any longer, <laughs> or surprise them by not doing it some nights. Um, so I'm, I, usually Scott's the first one to call in, or Phil is the first one to call in. And they, they used to have the excuse that they didn't want to be the first to call in, because the first to call in somehow, always somewhere down the line got screwed up. Uh, they, 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 uh, their picture froze or something would happen. But now with the new system we're using, that doesn't happen, so they have no excuse. The first person to call sets the table, okay? So uh, give, us, give us a call. We have a lot of people uh, watching us right now, which is, is kind of uh, great, and we have a lot of people listening. So if you've never even called this program before, uh, you might give it a try. Um, if you've got Skype, just go to Skype.com, download Skype, S-K-Y-P-E dot com, download Skype, and uh, then when, once you get it, you install it, you put your first name, your last name, your email address, and an ID that you want, and then uh, you simply uh, give us a call at GabNet Live, GabNet Live. And you can do that without asking to be a contact, because I can then make you a contact upon doing that. 
okay? So anyway, that's the simple way of doing it. That and the phone number and so on. But we need you to call, and we need people to call. I noticed that Kevin was just came on uh, Skype. Uh, uh, he, he just there, he, and, and here, oh, here's, oh, the, the first caller tonight, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, turn yourself sideways there. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let me, uh, let me go to you there. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. That's um, Charlene Martinez. Hello, Charlene. How are you this evening? Oh, I'm okay. Is my air conditioner bothering you? Or? No, no. Is my air conditioner okay. bothering you? No, no. <laughs> No, because it, I, I, I do have it on in the background, so, you know. Uh, wait a minute. Everybody's starting to come in the line. There we go. There's Phil Meyer. He's joined us. Hey. He Hello, Doing? Phil. Are you, um, a, are, you, are you in a different room tonight? Uh, uh, huh? No. Uh, say that again. Are you, in a, are, out in, in, are, are you in a different room tonight? No, I took down the green screen for a little while. Uh, why did you take it down? Because uh, I don't have the software up and running. Uh, oh, I've got to turn my camera software on. I, I don't have the uh, proper software running. Yeah. So I figured that I was better off just uh, pulling it down for a while. And uh, good. Uh, you know, until that day. We approve of that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you know. Um, and hello there to our good friend and. Uh, uh, mem member of GabNet, because he is the voice of GabNet, ladies and gentlemen, the uh, wonderfulness that is uh, uh, Rob Alfano. Hello, Rob. How are you? Good. How are you? Yeah. What's uh, what's new? Oh, Any... not too much. Just chugging along. This week seems to be crawling this week. Why is it crawling? That's a good question. But it is. And it feels like this whole friggin' apartment living thing is crawling. Is it getting to you? Ah, uh, I'm, I'm done with it. My wife is uh, out tonight. She's staying over a friend's house because uh, she had to get some work done on her teeth. And we, we haven't changed dentists yet. So it was an hour and a half drive to our old dentist. And um, so rather than drive home, so I'm, I'm here alone. Doesn't that frighten you on some level, changing dentists? Yes, and that's why I told her she had to have root canals and all this stuff done. And I'm like, do you really want to pick a guy that you don't know right here? Just drive the hour and a half, go to our old dentist, and well, you, you know, know uh, get it uh, done. Uh, Marjorie, we had to change dentists because our old dentist doesn't take our insurance. So she's out of network. I mean, we'll still get paid something, but not what we would normally get paid if she was in network. So uh, my girlfriend started going to another dentist, and then I had problems with a tooth that the old dentist knew about. And I wasn't about ready to go to a new dentist because they don't know the history of that tooth. Okay. Right. And, you get uh, the new files, you know, the files from the old dentist well, and the x-rays, uh, uh, and uh, they'll uh, know. Uh, that doesn't necessarily work in this. Uh, excuse me, I'm, my nose is dripping. Um, it doesn't necessarily work with this with this tooth deal. So Does I, Medicare pick up anything for dentists? No, no. Oh, so there's no medical no, dental. Rather. No. So uh, I went to my old dentist, and uh, she looked at it, and she did a few things. It cost me 215 bucks, and it, it doesn't hurt anymore now. She's, I thought it was a loose, it's a loose tooth, and I thought it was maybe getting worse and worse. She says, no, I just looked at the x-rays. There was no change in this tooth since, since 2012. So, see, I mean, she, she knew the history, so I got it taken care of. Now I'll go to the other one to get my teeth cleaned. Yeah, and you, you know. build a relationship slowly. You don't have them jump right into. Well, you know, she maybe another dentist would look at this and go, "Oh, that's got to be pulled," you know. Yeah. But she yeah. doesn't know the history of the tooth, so I, I, you know, uh, I, I don't feel, and, and girlfriend doesn't feel good about having to change dentist. But it's stupid that we have insurance and we can't use it, you know. Yeah. So you may as well go to a dentist where you can use it. So we have her do the the cleaning and. Uh, uh, some of the some of the maintenance, maybe some crowns or something that'll be picked up fifty percent, stuff like that, you know. And then yeah, for the back. Uh, yeah. yeah. Other than dentistry, there's a uh, job in radio open uh, uh, right now. It just opened up today, and all you radio guys can apply for it if you uh, are so inclined. Uh, Philadelphia. Uh, this guy is uh, just jockeying. His name was Bones, something Bones. 
And uh, today, uh, he was told by his management that he wasn't allowed to say negative things about Trump. So he quit. <laughs> now, so all you got to do is uh, not say nasty things about Trump, and you can have a job in radio. Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> it was impossible. Impossible. <laughs> it was it was for this guy Bones too. Yeah, I mean that's that to me there is something wrong with that and I think actionable to be honest with you. Absolutely. And what's agree. actionable about it is if you're running a talk station and you want people to have opinions and then you're telling your people what their opinions are supposed to be, that's somewhat fallacious. Well, and, MSNBC and, and, does that. Huh? No, MSNBC <laughs> doesn't do that. MSNBC has a, a bunch of uh, uh, of right wingers on now for crying out loud. Yeah, that's that's because all the left wingers had no uh, no ratings. What What but, do you mean? Uh, they're they're, be, they're in, in the night at nighttime slots now. MSNBC is beating out Fox. Yeah, well, that's easy to do. The Fox is all dead air, but except for Tucker Carlson. Uh, and, yeah, Tucker's and, job is on the line, by the way. Really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, talking about jobs on the line, there's been four special elections today, and three of them, uh, they've already declared the winner as a Republican. Mm -hmm. uh, these are congressional seats. And, were, were, and the were those, fourth, were those, the one in Georgia, yeah. the, uh, the Republicans ahead. Were those so, congressional seats normally held by a Republican? Yes. But okay, the then Democrats, shut up. <laughs> oh, no, 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 you shut up. What the Democrats well, are saying... Wait a minute. Saying, this is isn't a talk... They, this would, I didn't this hire you been... to do a talk show. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's not the deal. Uh, but uh, now... What's happened is, is prior to this, the Democrats, for instance, in the uh, Newt Ging old Newt Gingrich seat, yeah. they put in uh, was it twenty six million dollars? Uh, this is the it's one of the most expensive, money, yeah, yeah, most money ever spent on a congressional election, and uh, the district was narrowly won by uh, by Trump. Uh, so what's happening is the demographics are changing in this part of Georgia, and. Uh, even so, it looks like instead of a Democratic sweep, which was what they were looking for, or at least to take this very important seat, yeah. uh, now uh, it looks like they'll all be held by Republicans. Charlene, you had your hand up. You were waving. Yeah. Did I read that uh, this Georgia election is important for, you know, like they, they hmm. might try to uh, pass Trump care or something, but if something happens in Georgia, we could be saved from that or something? No, they're thinking that this is just an indication of what will happen in the future, that they that uh, this is a uh, uh, a, um, a referendum on Trump. And uh, uh, and now it, it's very, very close. Uh, a f a f an hour ago, uh, uh, Osich or whatever his name is, the Democrat was uh, a, a point or so ahead. Now, uh, with many more votes in, the uh, Republican was ahead. Uh, uh, I, you know, I, I, I think that I, you, uh, everything's going to turn. You know, Democrat. I don't. I don't think that any That's of these terrible. elections right now matter. Okay, uh, it's two years. It's a year, Hanser. When we've got to really see what what's going on, and and is going to be the true referendum on on Trump. Uh, right now, Trump is too early. People are still relying on his promises. Okay. Uh, by by a year and a half from now, they'll find out that none of them were none of them worked, okay, or changed anything. Or well, maybe they will. <laughs> maybe uh, you know, they, uh, maybe they well, will. But I can't see where when you're when you are spending your efforts to try and get seventy jobs for coal miners, that's really going after something ridiculous. The um, who, who it, whose audio whose audio is on. I don't know. Somebody's audio is on. I can hear. Uh -oh. uh oh. Okay. Anyway, now that's gone. It's gone. Yeah. Charlene well, got a haircut. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, t uh, tell me what you were saying there, Phil. Here. Oh, uh, about the referendum on uh, Trump. Yeah. Uh, so with this with this election, especially the one in Georgia, and especially being such a safe uh, Republican district. To have an election this close, they were hoping that uh, this newcomer, someone who had never been in politics before, 30 years old, 
uh, as Trump said he, uh, or tweeted, that he doesn't even live in his own district, uh, that, uh, that he, uh, this would um, uh, be a precursor uh, because Trump's uh, approval ratings are so low. They're lower now than, than, they, than they ever had been, so they looked at it as vulnerable. And uh, so if they carry this as low as his ratings are and as uh, vulnerable as uh, as they thought he yeah, was. Yeah, but, but it's not vulnerable in that these are traditionally Republican strongholds. Right. So, you know, where, where it's going to where it's going to become interesting is when we finally get one of these places that have been traditionally maybe Democratic that went uh, Republican or been Republican for the last couple of, of, of times. But we're traditionally democratic. What happens in those areas? Uh, yeah, well, they were they they smelled blood in this area. They thought that, and uh, and they still may, uh, because that election ha hasn't been called yet. It, it's too close to call. Uh, but they they thought that this was a, a was going to be the first of a Republican territory that had been taken, and uh, and and it previously had been a safe Republican seat. Yeah. Well. Uh, uh, who, who knows? But who who really truly cares? Because uh, uh, it's Gal Handel who's running, in and uh, you know, Kevin, and, what, and, Kevin, you know, what, Kevin, what do you think? Kevin, uh, I'm watching that 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 race very closely. I, it's all gobbledygook to me, except for the fact that they're just pumping money into it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I think it's too soon to try and do any kind of referendum on Trump. You know, yeah. because his his base support is going to stay his base support for a while until they find out they don't have a job or they don't have medical care or they don't have this or they don't have that. Right now, it's too early for them to find to have suffered any of the slings and arrows of his outrageous fortune. You know. Well, yes, uh, 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 Rob, it looks like you were going to say something. No, I just coughed. Got oh. my mic off. Oh, okay. Coughing. He coughed, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Let's hear it for Rob. Hey! Turn your head. Cough. I'm, I'm a pro. I have the cough button on. Right. You know, Alex, yeah. I, I got a chance to watch a lot of the uh, Putin thing. Yeah. You know, the Oliver Stone? Right. What I thought was really funny was when they sat him down, Putin, and they had him watching Dr. Strangelove. Yeah. That was really funny. Yeah, I thought it was a, I, I thought it was fun, but I thought totally unnecessary given the right. circumstances. Right, I don't think he was really laughing. I, you know? I think that it kind of belied the gravity of the situation, you know. Right. And and uh, I don't know that if I had hours and hours with Trump uh, with Putin that I would waste two hours of them watching a movie with him. Right. Okay. Right. Just because I like the movie and I'm a movie maker. Right. Uh, it's right. a stretch, like uh, what happens on GabNet. <laughs> you know, when when nobody's calling. Oh, really? Really? <laughs> is, is that only on Showtime or HBO? It's or only a, only on Showtime. Showtime. I yeah. got it on demand with FiOS, like you know, but it is through Showtime, right? Yeah, oh, it is okay. through Showtime. Yeah. I'll have to wait to find it some yeah, other I, way. And I didn't really sit down again, and it was hard for me because I had, I'm like. You know, I guess Putin, like his, he speaks English, but I guess he doesn't feel that he speaks it well enough that he'd rather be interpreted. Oh right? no, no, he 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 was fine. There was a couple of times off, sort of off to the side when he had conversations with yeah, uh, I, I some think, of the I think staff. I think that if you are saying things which may have ramifications, okay, right. uh, you don't want to be misquoted. Right. And so, therefore, you do the Russian. Now, what I thought was interesting, I was watching uh, Democracy Now!, which I very seldom do, but they had Oliver Stone on, okay? Yeah. And they showed scenes from that interview. But what they did is when the writing came on the screen, they had somebody reading it. I think he would have done much better with that interview had he, yes, had the writing on the screen, but also had somebody reading it. Right, Because right. it is... It is a pretty hard slog, right? Uh, reading is. all that, all those subtitles. Um, right. Even in a movie, you don't have that many subtitles. You have a subtitle when somebody says something. <clears throat> Here, this guy is talking constantly, and what you're doing is you're you've got a transcript going of what he's saying. So I think it would have been better had he had not only the. I, I agree with the subtitling, but I think <clears throat> he would have done better had he. 
uh, also, uh, you know, uh, had somebody reading it at the same time. Hello uh, to our, <laughs> oh boy, we're getting all kinds of people. Here comes, uh, here comes Tony. And uh, we've got, uh, we've got, uh, let's see here. Who, who do we have here so far? Uh, huh? Well, you know, I, I have a hard time with the Citizen Panel program title because I like to have your name down there because I'm bad with names. I'm bad at remembering names. Brian. Brian, of course. But it, I, it, it, it's easier for me when I can go up here and, oh, yeah, Jeff, uh, Kevin, uh, Phil, uh, Anthony, uh, Charlene, Rob, you know. But anyway. Hi, Brian. How you doing? Not too bad. And the reason why I have that uh, screen name, you should know, is uh, I'm thinking, uh, I'm bouncing it around in my head here for a while now. Uh, in the event that you're absent again and there's no program airing between at least 11 and 12 before the intersection, have something like that initiated where anybody can host as a temporarily and then oh oh anybody can host it. huh that's what it's come well, to, to any keep, well, who else is going to do it if any out. anybody can host ah, i see okay i can figure that out in about Six. 20 months five, five years no right any shithead can host this show i didn't say that you're just projecting oh i say i'm just projecting that's yeah, okay that's all right it's all right Anyway, uh, so um, uh, so that's why you have that there. That is correct. So, I so, figured it would, like I said before, when you made mention of it before, I guess you're. Yeah, but if, if I if, if some night uh, if some you grabbed your attention. Yeah, but if some night I'm it. sick, let's say. Yes. How are you going to turn this? How are you going to turn the server on? Well, I that would be uh, a, that that would not that that would be out of the question. No, um, you just be re a recorded a Skype step. conversation posted online after it's done, and uh, you know, people and whoever comments on after the after it's been aired. Yeah, was, yeah. Then yeah. Hey Tony, Hi. how you doing, Tony? How's your uh, how's your uh, what was it? Your aunt? My aunt. Yeah. How's she? She's doing? gonna pull through with them. She's gonna ah. she's gonna pull through. I'm happy. Though. Well, I never liked her anyway. You know, <laughs> uh, yeah. My my uh, second wife uh, had her oh. operation today. I, I have no idea what's happened so far. I'm looking at her site because some friend of hers is supposed to post how she do she's doing, but she's probably going to be out for several days. So I'm going to call the hospital tomorrow and find out. It's been on my mind all day. Just you know. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry about that, Alex. What was her? Uh... You said that you can go on and read, you know, her blog or something. Yeah, it's timegoesby.net. Okay. Uh, and um, she's written some very good stuff leading up to this, uh, but you know, she's got uh, pancreatic cancer, which, as we all know, oh is look, look at the expression on Jeff's face. He knows what I'm saying. It, Three months. It, well, in her case, uh, they're doing a thing called the Whipple. You're condemned procedure. to die. No, they're doing the Whipple procedure, and they said that it is confined to the tip of her pancreas. And oh. if they do the Whipple procedure and they get it all, it can be successful. I, I can't help it. Please don't squeeze the Charmin. What? What is that? What? The Whipple. Oh. The Whipple. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's the Whipple. <laughs> anyway, uh, so uh, I, I agree with you that usually if you hear you have pancreatic cancer, you, you go, say goodbye. You know? Yeah. That's uh, what happened to my dad. How how long did it take him to go? Uh just about a little under two years. Oh, that long. That yeah. Long. Did he have an operation at all to try and take care of it? No, no See. operation. See? But I think part of the reason why it took so long is because of his age. Because when you get to be a certain yes. age, uh the you know, your body doesn't perform the way it did. So so even cancer cells don't perform the way they would if you're younger. Really, if you're younger, a cancer cell will be more aggressive. Absolutely. More aggressive. Really, is that yeah. true? Is that true, Jeff? Jeff knows a yes, lot about absolutely this. Absolutely true. And uh, if you're 90 years old or something like that, it, it can take years. Yeah, because your your body doesn't regenerate the way it did. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. So it slows the cancer down. Well, she's uh, yeah. she's about I think a year younger than I am. And uh, mm -hmm. they they said they wouldn't be doing this procedure unless they thought there was a good shot at you know. At her surviving. Alex, is this the wife that we are not to know her name? Or? No, like Ronnie. 
Uh, Ronnie. Yeah, if you go to yeah she was the one that was producing uh, television. She was uh, Barbara Walters, uh, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. Producer. Mm -hmm. uh, and where does she live? She lives in, uh, she lives now in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. which oddly enough was where she was born but originally when she left new york she went to portland maine she has something about portland and then she yeah. went to portland mm -hmm. uh, oregon and they have a very good hospital up there illinois huh illinois maine yeah and what's the third one what, what, uh, what, on what, what, you, what are you naming off the names of Portland. cities that are uh, have the same name have the same name. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Probably, uh, there's Portland, Maine, Portland, Oregon. Is there Portland, Illinois? I didn't know that. I think there's an Illinois. Really? Um, uh, Is there any ports in Illinois? I don't know. She, she was. She's really. You know. So so she's got a great doctor and she's in a good hospital and they've done these operations before. Uh, and they say that it's been confi it's confined to her the tip of her pancreas, and in that case, they can usually get it. But they have to take a lot of other stuff out too—a little bit of the stomach, a little <clears throat> take out the gallbladder. So she's going to be rewired, so to speak. Her plumbing is going to be readjusted, and and therein lies the danger. You know, I mean, she could die on the operating table, you know, with something like this. But if she survives it, she probably outlived me. You know, so and, and I can only hope. What are you eating, Brian? <laughs> You're always eating. When are we going to put you on a diet? Last time it was ice cream, and he didn't share. <laughs> uh, it's kind of hard to share digitally, but uh, yeah. yeah, spaghetti. It's spaghetti. Mm. spaghetti. Yummy, yeah, yummy. Am I supposed yummy. to see Brian? Huh? Yeah, you, I don't see Brian. Well, you guys... well, what are you using to, to call the program? Oh, the iPhone. So using the iPhone. Saying. Probably a lot of these things adjust themselves to your phone and the size of your phone. Here comes Jack Bishop. Let's see if I can get him on. Well, let me see here. He's not coming on. Damn it. Let me hang up on him. I don't know what his problem is. Hold on a second. Let me call him back and add him to the group. There we go. Uh, we add him to the group. I don't know what the Jack, are you there? I don't know what's wrong with you. Every time you call every time you call, I can't I can't add you to the group. Oh, I'm that kind of guy. Hold on a second. Let me turn this down. Yeah. Whoa. I can't turn that radio down. No, but when you do that, I can't add you to the group. If for some reason there's something about are you still using the old Skype? Yeah. Oh, you didn't upgrade the Skype this weekend. <clears throat> Gonna do it uh over the weekend. When you, I have time to to play with it and make sure that you, I know how you, to use you it, said you were, so you, you don't said think you, I'm I'm some sort of cretin. Yeah, well, that's maybe the reason why I can't just click you on or whatever. <laughs> but I just call you back. It's a simple process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, well, I can't believe that I actually uh, agreed with you and Phil Meyer about what? Because mm. I don't know that Phil Meyer and I agreed about anything tonight. <laughs> Well, I think the two of you both said it's too early to see if we're going to have a uh, uh, this Georgia election is too early to be a referendum on anything. Yes. But that's why they spent all the money, because they were hoping that it would be. Well, you got to spend the money. You got to, you know, it's like, it's like with the lottery. You got to buy the ticket to have a chance at winning. You got to be in it to win it, I so think, is the, is the... They uh, said... For every penny of local money, uh, what came from the West Coast was ten dollars for every penny of, of local money. Well, so, that's because uh, th th that's because uh, unlike any civilized country, yeah. where we would have publicly financed campaigns, now money would be used for infrastructure or something other of vital yeah. importance. Yes, you know, you, you, you know. Uh, uh, we choose to make our elected officials get out on their knees like hookers on the on a street corner. <laughs> hey, I'm just calling it like I see it. Right. We're not their primary clients, though. The corporations are their primary clients. Well, the banks are their primary clients. Well, he, well they're the no, pimps and hoes. Uh, the the banks and corporations are the are the uh, pimps. pimps yeah. uh, and the politicians are the whores. Politicians are the whores, and in the case of the Republicans, the folks that vote for them are the sh are, are the schnooks, or the, but, sh uh, the sheep. Sheep. 
that's what we think about the Democrats. Oh, oh, sure. Sure, you're supposed to. (laughs) You're supposed to. We're supposed to be adversarial. No, you're not. Uh, You know, you're supposed to get things done. Once there's an election, you're supposed to sit down and say, let's get some things done. I agree with you, but that's different than politicking. you You can blame Mitch McConnell for that. Oh, you know, Mitch McConnell's the guy that came out and said the business of the next four years is to make sure that Barack Obama doesn't get a second term. Mm-hmm. And Nancy Pelosi, I mean, she's Trump. got uh, Trump uh, hanging an effigy in her that office. That is post the first, you know, the first <laughs> strike is the strike that becomes tit for tat, tit for tat. And by oh, the way, Nancy okay. wants her. Like t- by the way, Pelosi what's wants. Not, what's b- by the tits? way, Pelo- no, Pelosi wants her tit back. So you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, not Pelosi's tits. They probably would like fall <laughs> off in your teeth. You know. Shut up! Shut up! Like basins or some shit. I swear, I'm going to hire Brian my as my my sir. my attack yeah, dog. <laughs> yeah, Brian is at times the wittiest guy in the room. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he'll get me in trouble someday. There'll be a knock on the door. It'll be you know, the secret police. It'll be the so secret police. Tell that bureaucratic ladder climbing semen slipping cocksucker to get a real job and prosecute some real criminals for a change. And he'll come in and say, "Mr. Bennett, no. we have ways to make you talk." Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, am I am I the last guy to find the show Newsroom on HBO? Yes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just found this show and I've watched the first season and it's brilliant. Yeah, Jeff Daniels, Aaron Sorkin, all that. Yeah. Aaron brilliant. Sorkin, Aaron Sorkin may be the best writer we have in America. He writes every one of those, and the 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 writing is just superb. That that first speech he gives in the very first episode, where somebody says. Uh, uh, yeah. do, do you think America is the what be- makes greatest? America co- great. What makes America right. great? And he said, America isn't great. And then yeah. that whole speech is just brilliant. It's just brilliant. Uh, I love how they intertwine they intertwine the real news and commentary about the news into this fictitious storyline. Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, and, and it went for three seasons. And that was it. That's all. Yep. That's that all. Three seasons. That's all he did. Yeah. You know uh, why do we why do we say that? Oh, only three seasons. Most <laughs> series should probably only be three seasons. Right. Because by the time true. you get That's to true. the fourth and fifth, you go all Not right like already. Years. You know. Come on. I'm just so enjoying it. At, like I like I just I'm ready to start season two, and I'm thinking because I have Amazon Prime and it's it's available on Amazon yeah. Prime, and I'm thinking, oh, okay, so I'm going to have to go to HBO on demand to find the rest of them but that's mm-hmm. there's only three that's it, it, there, no with three no there's about six episodes i think the last the, the last season no, was no, like three five seasons he said oh three seasons yeah there's seasons, three seasons. yeah yeah they don't have oh, the, so the last season is not a full 12 episodes uh, no it's like i think it's maybe six or five if i remember correctly okay you know uh but uh, i mean Sorkin said he was bringing it to an end, not because HBO wanted him to, but because he said all he had to say, you know. And and yeah. and writing the show, that kind of show is is exhausting. Okay. But you know, Bob, uh, the the BBC does that all the time. You know, they may do a season that's only four or five episodes. Actually, they do. They're usually they do uh, uh, eight episodes on on most series. On some series, they'll only do four episodes. Uh, uh, Doctor Who, they do like 12 because it's a moneymaker for them. But what they do is they, they, you know, it can be four, it can be six, sometimes eight. uh, And that's it. Then come back next year. We'll see you then, you know. Uh, You know, now that I know it's only three, three seasons, I have to wonder if Alan Sorkin is sorry since this whole thing with Trump because I was like really looking forward to seeing what he was doing with the contemporary stuff going on, you know? So uh, you got to wonder if you, what it, what, what it would have looked like had he gone through the, the, uh, the, the campaign and the beginning of Trump's presidency. Well, what, what, when it ran, if I remember correctly, 
the scenarios they were doing we were about a year old in mm -hmm. other words they were going oh, okay. back and 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 examining those stories a year later basically I see. maybe uh, they should bring back and do a couple of specials yeah uh, but that's only if sorkin wants to and i think he's on this I, who, who knows what he's doing next yeah. but boy, at the very least you could go onto the web websites and see if you can find any fanfic you know you get a little fanfic. but you get a little tired of series that overstay their welcome yes you know uh i i just started watching a strange show on stars called american gods Star, a wonderful good. program Neil Gaiman. I, I, yeah, Neil Gaiman. I, I resisted watching it when girlfriends started watching it because I had so much other stuff on my on my table on my table. So now there's nothing to watch. So I started watching this, and it's spectacular. It's good. I didn't watch it. It's good, Alex. It's, it's, didn't I just say that? Oh yeah. You said, what is it? How much Alex? more do I'm I have sorry. to wax poetic about how good American Gods? I, I've heard of it, but what is it? it? You know, it's hard to explain. It's a guy, you know, he, he gets out of prison, and uh, his, he hooks up with some guy named Mr. Wednesday. And who I will tell you who Mr. Wednesday really is, but I don't want to spoil it for you. Why? <coughs> what, you mean, who, hmm? who he turns out to be? Yes. Don't say Well, he's either the devil or something I'm like that. that. No. Well, 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 he's not the devil. I'll put it to you that way. Oh. But, but, the, but the real premise of it is, is you have these... These ancient gods, who are pissed off at the th over being replaced by the new gods like the internet and cell phones and Facebook, yeah, and and they want to get back their power. They want to get their mojo going again. Yeah, there is one scene in the second episode. I'm on. I'm on the. We're going to start the fourth. Um, in the second episode about slaves on a slave ship. Yes, that is just mm -hmm. wonderful. Oh. Uh, and, and how they suddenly this, I guess, old god appears to them and says, I'm going to let you go now and you got to go kill the crew and then set fire to the ship and, you know, whatever. And they said, but that'll kill us. They said, you're dead already. Well, you that's know, a great line. You know, yeah. he said, you may as well go out, you know, doing something. So they... They literally set the whole ship on fire. But I'm not spoiling anything because these little sure. vignettes they throw in to the show about the old gods. They start out with the Vikings in one case. Uh, in another, it's it's really it's a wonderful show. It's a really a wonderful uh, show. Uh, well, I haven't watched a few episodes. I can't say anything about it because I just saw the season finale and I and I'm prone to give all sorts of good shit away. Yeah, well, don't, or I'll come out there all the way Boiling, to Texas yes. and Boiling. kill you. How's the weather out there today, by the way, Jack? Well, uh, I know I have been in Texas too long, Alex. You know, I've been here since the early 70s, and I walked outside today, and I said, gee, 95 degrees, not that bad. <laughs> really? <laughs> Really, 95 fucking degrees. Jeez, oh my. Well, it was 95 here last week at one point. You know. No, it's it's going to be 95 to 100 for the next three months here, easily. Yeah, yeah. I never liked the hot weather in Texas. I never did. I don't like it either. It's been between 100 and 104 the last couple of days where the store is, and it's so <laughs> damn hot. Uh, yeah. Where, where are you? Are you out in Walnut Creek, your store? Uh, I live in Walnut Creek. The store's in Concord. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's even hotter than uh, Walnut Creek. Like yeah. San Fran was cold. It's been yeah, fairly reasonable Fran here, ha ha hasn't it, Jeff? San Fran, no. It's, it's been... uh, if you go 20 miles east of me, you're at the coast, and it's 30 degrees cooler. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. I did that last night. I went from our place to Salinas, and it was 58 in Salinas. It was 97 here. Yeah, I mean, you you go over you 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 stay in the Bay Area, and I call San Francisco the world's only air conditioned city, you know. Yeah. And especially at night, if you have a hot day and the fog is rolling in at night, all of a sudden, I mean, it drops from you know eighty degrees down to fifty. Right. But get, you go, but you go through you go through the uh, the uh, the, uh, tunnel, the tunnel, uh, the Cal Caldecott Tunnel. You come yeah. out the other side, the difference in temperature is 20, 25 degrees. 
on a hot day. I, I like that one. I got to tell you about the first time I took Donna to San Francisco. Mm-hmm. And I was real excited because I hadn't been home in forever. But I, and we were going in August. And so I told her, pack a better. coat. <laughs> pack a coat. <laughs> and, and so she said, oh, who needs a coat in sunny California? <laughs> you know, and I said, That's Sunny so California cool. is south of the Tehachapi, you know. Right. And so the woman did not pack a coat. Somebody got a new coat. So oh, so we so leave. <laughs> so we leave here on a uh, on a morning where it was going to get up to 102. We get off the plane five and a half hours later at San Francisco International. The high has already peaked at 63. And she's going, it's it's I. It's cold here. And I said, I told you. She said, but I saw all those Annette Funicello movies. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Well, long state. That's to begin with, that was down in LA. Yeah. Yeah. Where I kept telling her. And I, and I, and I gave her the famous Samuel Clemens quote about the uh, coldest winter I ever spent was a summer in San Francisco. And she did not believe me. So she, so we spend a week in the Bay Area. She gets back to Texas. She starts telling all of the girls that she worked. Oh, it was, it was terrible. It was terrible. It never got out of the '60s. And all of the girls she worked with said, "Oh my God, that sounds like heaven." Yeah, well, what are you complaining <laughs> yeah. about? You know why you? Uh, to begin with, you know I lived with you at the same time you moved to Texas for the first time, right? Yeah. 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 And and I left as soon as I could. Well, <laughs> you know, well, my, I, and well, I and and when I found out years later you were still in fucking Texas, I went, "Is he insane?" No, I, I left and came back. Yeah. Well, Houston is worse than like Dallas. Oh, Houston is just oppressive because you're right on the, you're right on the uh, the uh, what do you call it the oh, what do they call yeah. that. The Gulf Coast. Coast. Mm. Yeah. Well, as yeah. I said, I never. Wow. I, I, I my biggest problem was I never kept was able to keep a crease in my pants. Nobody was. <laughs> you know, and I used to tell people, I'd go to work and walk out of the out of the building and and say I need another shower. Yeah. But yeah, but, but my mistake was, I was working in Baltimore. I looked out the window one day in November. Mm-hmm. There was two feet of snow on the ground and I said I'm not used to this kind of shit at all after two winters of that I I called a friend of mine in New York who you might remember Jerry Bolding and I had told Jerry I want to go work somewhere where it's warm and he says there's a job in Dallas and I thought to myself well gee I'm halfway back home Uh, you know I was uh, in my mid 20s and I said well I'll work on my resume and I'll land a job as a program director back home in San Francisco. And I never tried to get a job outside of this area. I just kept falling into job after job after job. My go with what works. But every summer, I, I say to myself, you damn fool. <laughs> Wasted your life being here. Oh, I just thought of that song from... Uh... Midnight Cowboy going where the weather suits my clothes. Or oh yeah. Mm. <laughs> is it uh, time for tech time? What do you mean? Is it time for tech time? Uh, not green screen. No, no. Uh, uh, Drobo. Uh, my Drobo came yesterday. What's a Drobo? What the hell is that? Uh, it's uh, it's like the NAS uh, that uh, uh, Rob was talking about. Uh, it, oh, yeah. uh, this one's those. this one you put in five drives. Mm-hmm. And that it automatically rebuilds the drives. Yep. And if a drive fails, you just pop one fail. out, put another one in, and it rebuilds right. that. Right. So uh, I got uh, five. Uh, the drives haven't arrived yet, but I got five eight terabyte red uh, Western Digital drives. How much are you spending and, for man, this? That must have cost oh. a fortune. <laughs> they were uh, two seventy nine each on at, at Anorama. Oh, you can get them. You get them cheaper. You 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 overpaid. Oh no! Uh, no, uh, no, no. For like or uh, how, how big are they? Uh, eight terabytes. Eight terabytes. Eight terabytes. Hold on. It's the eight terabyte Reds. What do you mean uh, red? Uh, They're seventy two hundred the, RPM, right? Yeah, seventy two hundred RPM. But a yeah. red is a uh, NAS drive. And what do you need all these drives for? Uh, photos. 
Do you have no, that you many don't. photos? You, eight te well, terabytes. You could fit every photo you ever took in your life on an eight terabyte right, drive. You have you have backups five of, them. of this. How many? Oh, you bought five of those? Yeah. Damn. That's a, well. Then you're going to set it terabytes. up in like a RAID five, aren't you? Right. Well, exactly. Mine, of yeah. So you'll have a RAID five, and you you like a like a what a four three plus one or a a four plus one. You should do RAID six. Four uh, plus there's two. also a, a slot for an SSD that that accelerates it, and uh, it's like so a turbo what, drive. Yeah, it's read cache. You don't store yeah, anything so on I there. I got the five DT, so it's got two Thunderbolt ports, and uh, yeah, that read cache. Uh, I had an extra SSD drive laying around that I replaced from my uh, laptop. So I figured it's just fast enough. You know, it's enough. Yeah, because you need that with the slower drives. Well, hey, yeah. Phil, that's what it's, I want to know. With, with, with 7,800 RPM, do you 72. use a sapphire 72. needle or a diamond tip? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, wind, I wind it up, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Jack. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I wind it up, and then I put the steel needle on the 78 oh. RPM oh. record. Oh, good. So that, that whole thing yeah. must have taken you back the middle. about fifteen hundred bucks. Uh, the uh, the box was eight hundred seven ninety nine, and the drives were uh, two seventy nine. Why did why did you uh, go Why did you go with the reds? Well, you you could you could you, if for for the for those kinds of for photographs, you do yeah. not need a drive that fast or that. Said, well, it's not that fast, but it, it, it's stable. Uh, what it is is the the reds are uh, dependable, and you know the I reds figured, are hey, no I, more you know. dependable than the greens. I've I've seen reds well, go bad, but yeah, you know I mean, what? Right. When you have a RAID five, you don't need to worry about dependability so much. Yeah, yeah. I, I think your so drive you're, fails. You just you got a hot spare right there. Yeah, well, it's maybe what double the price of a you know just a cheap eight a terabyte drive. You know, cheap eight terabyte drives one sixty nine. This is two seventy nine. Oh and yeah, that's my. That's not. It's just a little bit more. Well, it's a five hundred dollar difference. But if I don't have to re replace the drives as often, how do you know you're uh, you're going to have to replace any of those other drives? You know, drives. If drives are going to go, drives are going to go. It's not because you suddenly paid a lot of money for it that you're going to be any safer. Am I right, Rob? Drives. Well, there there are better drives than other drives. No question about it. More dependable drives, for sure. But. When you've got a RAID, if you had just a regular one drive, I would agree. But if you have a RAID 5 there where you've got a hot spare that's going to rebuild <laughs> itself, you're really protected. You don't need the, that extra. Yeah, and, and also, you know, as uh, cameras okay, and this megapixels. Is, this is boring. This is boring. Uh, yes, yeah. uh, uh, Jack. Jack. What if I get a 36 Jack, megapixel Jack, camera? I don't care. So I, I don't on? care. I, I just none of the, this Charlie, audience doesn't care. Shit either. What was that? Charlie, do you understand any of the shit they're talking about? No, this is worse than the cigar. Yeah, this is, uh, we just, <laughs> <laughs> we just, well, it's the, it's the tech type That's segment my of the show. That's my cigars girl. are next. We, we go to cigars next. <laughs> we just lost, so lost the the we yeah. just lost an ass load of people. Yeah. Well, is, yeah. Is, is there, Brian, we, what do you got to say about that? About what? <laughs> He said we just lost an ass load of people. Well, I was just gonna. I was actually thinking, what constitutes an ass load, and what what is it proportion wise to each cheek? <laughs> yeah. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, John is calling. Uh, okay. Full house. We have a full house now. Hello, John Rockwell. We're doing. You want a, You want a full house? We give you a full house. Yeah. Yeah. How's that? There we go. Got I just got home a little while ago, and I look and say. Well, there are one, two, three, four, five. Oh, I can, I, one more left. <laughs> you can make for a full house, right, exactly. Hey, here we it, go. Exactly. Yeah, and John, if you don't get enough of this, you can call me in about 30 minutes for, what's that show I do? Uh, 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 the uh, Intervention? Inter, inter, intervention? No, no, that's not right. Intervention. We can call it. it. it, it <laughs> intervention, yeah, yeah. What was <laughs> At this point, I might need one. I don't know, no. Yeah. I've been... I had I had a few more beers than I probably should have, but it was a fun day. So what the hell? Yeah. Well, you just you I, just, I walked you, the you, High Lime today. You, 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 oh, one of the best little oh yeah instant there. little instant parks on the on the, down on the uh, west side. This is old it, part of it used it was to be the beautiful. old. It used to be part of the old freeway. The Skyway. Well, it was actually. no. It was actually it was actually a train. It was actually a, a freight trains uh, thing. They they put the 
they made it an elevated train thing so they wouldn't be on 10th Avenue, oh. which they called Murder Avenue for a while because the trains would come through <laughs> is, even at slow is, speed and run over people. John, is that the area that Trump rehabilitated? Ah, uh, probably. Mm. Oh, no, Brown it's not Denver. not that far down. Not that. Oh, okay. No, he was more a little. He was a little bit more on the uh, upper upper east and west side than that. Was, this that is that where. Is well, now we got that. Uh, uh, the the uh, oh, the, the there there there's a whole bunch of new, extremely expensive apartment buildings being built yeah. in this area of of Chelsea, where like nobody in their light right mind about. 10 or 12 years ago, why would you want to live there? <laughs> you know, it's, it's all industrial. It's all. And then, and then the gays moved up from the upper, from the <laughs> West village and they moved in. Now it's all the upscale gays are now moving in. They've I guess. Everything. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. It's a, you know, I have pictures of like these really absurd modernistic, uh, high rise or medium rise apartments. It's like, I just, I, just, I still can't understand why, it's it's not an area, 10th Avenue, that area. There's not a lot you can do there. But, hey, you know, it's it's New York. So every up and coming. neighborhood becomes a new neighborhood. You know? right. it, was, it was always fun. It was different. Yeah. And then I went over and visited my old uh, my my old local uh, beer bar. And it was one of those things I felt was like uh, the um, it was sort of like the Godfather line about, you know, every time you go out, they keep pulling me back in. <laughs> every time I was ready to leave, a new friend would come in and say, oh, geez, I better have another. So I'm I'm here. <laughs> well, He's here. Thank John, you very you're much. Was, yeah. Great. Be grateful because you could be trapped down here where I am, yeah. where, yeah. Uh, you know, I am 35 miles away from anything of culture or interest of interest huh? yeah. unless you're a republican okay. unless what unless you're unless a you're republican, republican. Oh, by the way you know who i haven't heard from in about three nights straight is scott scott is in, has been calling the program lately really i don't Maybe know on another road trip What's I was that? just that wondering really about him. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking of uh, the conversation about Neil Gaiman and the uh, yeah. shows that and Lucifer. Having watched uh, two seasons of Lucifer, it makes me wonder again, once again, who the bad guy really is. <laughs> oh, what, on, 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 whether or not God is the actual. Well, Lucifer, bad. In, in Lucifer, they play up God to be evil, to be Which, the bad guy. He's making well, everybody's at least equivalent to the uh, to the devil. And it's like there's not a lot of big difference there. <laughs> well, no, he, uh, the, the, the devil, who's Lucifer in this particular case right. on that show, is portrayed as a fairly uh, decent yeah. uh, entity. But yeah. God has, is always let coming. Let me ask in, this question for those yeah. of you who do believe. Uh, when has the devil, devil punished anybody who didn't deserve punishment? Right. You mean on the TV show or, or, or supposedly in the canons? Well, even in, yeah. Well, on the, on the TV even, show, yeah. he likes working as a cop because he can punish evildoers. Yeah. But isn't that what he's always done in hell? He, oh, yeah. Punish those yeah. who deserve punishment? Yeah. It's what I did. But, you know, if I, if you, if you were, <laughs> let's say you were the devil and you were the, you were the son of God, you know, you were then sent down uh, to reign over yeah. hell. Uh, wouldn't you be pissed at dad? You know, I mean, he gave you a shit job. I'd be mad. I'd be crying. Especially oh, when I your father him out, created him the place. Out of the good to place. Get what? what, what who, 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 who? What? What? You so, know, when I, when I had my heart surgery, one of my relatives asked me, Jackie, were you worried about dying? And I, t I, I was honest with him. I was not worried at all because I realized. That I knew where, if there was a heaven or a hell, I knew I was going to hell. And I knew that all the people that I knew and loved were there. Yeah. You know, that my dad had Friday night poker games and Saturday night dice games. His older brother had the Budweiser and the Jack Daniels distributorship. Mm -hmm. Ooh. And, and, and my mom's older brother, who was my favorite, he would come up to me and say, boy, I've been waiting for you, and I got a couple of girls for you to meet over there on the other side of the fire. <laughs> I was I was home free, man. The only person I wouldn't have seen would have been my grandmother, because I knew my mother. Well, I don't care know about you, but, but during but, his life. But dying scares the shit out of me. 
That's because you're a control freak, Alex, and you can't control it, right? You're, you're right. That's a very good. That's a very good way of thinking about it. Yeah. Well, that's right. have, you, have you ever? Had... What if there's nothing else after? Like we think there could be something else after death. What if there isn't anything? Which I'm inclined to believe there is. It's all it is is a suspension of consciousness. Uh, yeah. Going back to, uh, but I, I uh, don't understand that. See, because I can't, uh, I, I can't get my grasp, my mind around, and I, I think I'm a fairly intellectual person, but I can't wrap my mind around not having consciousness. Yeah, that's the only thing we. It doesn't mean you. Tough. I don't know. That, who says you won't have consciousness? You won't have body, but who says you won't have consciousness? Well, I don't know, but I'd like to know now, so I don't have to worry about it. If you had consciousness, and I'm, I'm not about ready, that, I'm not about ready to rely on religion to give me some fakakta answer that there's a guy up on a cloud who's going to take good care of me. Because if he's going to take good care of me, he wouldn't let me die. <laughs> you boy, you know. I I, wait a minute, hold on a second. Jeff is looking at me. Am I right, Jeff? I, I have ver <laughs> You what? I think he is. Frozen. When I die, I will be dead. Yeah. yeah. And you think, and you you guys think it's there, huh? Well, I, 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 if you don't mind me saying so, Jeff, in a way, you, you've come closer to it than probably anybody on this panel. Yeah. Wouldn't you say? That's probably true. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, I, and I still got more to go. The, I, got, I know you yeah. got more to go. But what I'm saying <laughs> is that when you were at that precipice where you thought, hey, I don't know if it's going to go one way or the other, how did you personally deal with that? Well... You know, most of the times I was pretty enthusiastic about about the, the process, so to speak, really? and the people I was working with. You mean, you mean yeah. the stuff that was being done to you? Yeah. So you yeah, were. Th I thought there was a good chance. But one time when I had a stroke, I had no idea what was going on. I mean, I just woke up, you know, post surgically the next day. Yeah. And, and I didn't even know I was going to have surgery. Uh, and I think that's what happens when you die. You don't wake up. It's you're. It's done. You're over. Yeah. Uh, well, like know, for instance, my my okay. my second wife went in for this operation today, and I looked uh, I looked it up, right. and I I and, and you uh, you remember Ronnie, right, Jack? Sure. Yeah. Well, she yeah. has. John, I don't I don't remember her at all because I think she was pretty much gone by the time. By the I time, knew you. By the time later, Midnight Blue, third, she was Jack. She she was right. already on to other people. Right. Uh, I met her once or twice. She wandered through, but that was, you know. Yeah. But yeah, interesting. Uh, but I didn't it's really after know her. Ronnie, that I don't remember, Alex. What? Uh, what? It's the wives after Ronnie that I don't remember. <laughs> right. I'm, and and, I'm and by the way, uh, by the way, can I mention? I, I can't remember them either. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can. That's weird. Uh, yeah. uh, 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 can anybody name my first wife? Ah, there's the one. Uh, there's I'm the one. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> For years, I thought Ronnie was your first wife. No, she's my second wife. Yeah. Right. But anyway, uh, she was, um, um, in fact, I, I remember a story about Ronnie. When we broke up, when she d decided to leave me, as she's leaving, she says, by the way, you know what you've never done? I said, what? She said, you never engraved my uh, uh, wedding ring. And I, you know I always wanted you to engrave something on it, and you never did. And I said, because I couldn't come up with the, just the right sentiment to put on the ring. And she says, well, no, you can, on a ring, you can put a nice little small sentiment on the ring. And I said, well, it's funny, because just about a week ago, I finally decided what I was going to engrave on the ring. And she uh -oh. said, she said well, and then she got, she got kind of soft and nice, and she went, <laughs> Well, what were you going to write on, on on the inside of the ring? And I said, number two in a series. And you wonder and what? The door slammed. She slammed the luggage <laughs> shut and left. <laughs> you know. hey, I, I had a guy that you worked with. That was the end of the yes. game. <laughs> what? What? I had a guy that I worked that you worked with in Houston tell me that the reason why my career had not gone any farther. He said, your problem is you don't have enough ex-wives. You've only been married twice, and one of them died. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, well, I, I, I had a guy by the name of Chuck Dunaway who, who was quite a, quite a rake. And, oh, yeah. uh, and, and, and one day 
uh, he uh, I, I'm, I, he comes in and I'm, I'm finishing up my show and records playing and he goes, wow, my wife really really let me have it a couple of nights ago. And I said, really? He says, yeah. She said, you know, you better shape up. And I said, well, what's the problem? He says, do you know how boring it is coming to work from the same direction every day? <laughs> Ooh. Wait, where's that bell? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, but uh, anyway, but Ronnie, you know, here's the great thing about Ronnie. I mean, years later, I went back and I apologized for the fact that I was a terrible husband. Uh, and I couldn't keep my dick in my pants. And, you know, uh, and uh, uh, I apologized. And ever since then, we've been very good friends. And I was talking to her the other night and I said, you know, the one thing I'm glad that I did with you and I is that I, we were able to make peace with the situation because really, turns out, we're really better friends than we were husband and wife. Sure. You know, the, we, were meant, we, were, we were meant to be friends. We were not mm -hmm. meant to be husband and wife. And, mm -hmm. and I feel that way, you know, and I love her dearly. And I'm, I, you know, my, I, a moment hasn't passed today that I haven't been thinking about her and hoping that she's going to be okay. Sure. And, and I'm, I'm proud to say that I actually get along with my ex-wives. And the one that I've got now. Probably get along not, better not with them. Not that many people do. <laughs> you know, probably get along better with the ex-wives than I do with the one I have now, you know. but uh, oh. uh, no. I well, you know, that. Alex, Donna and I have been together. We will be, uh, we will have been man and wife come September yeah. 30 years. Uh -huh. and I mean, 30 years. Okay, and, I missed it before and, I cut off. And, and three wow. of them were half bad. The wow. Three of them were in half bad. Now, let me ask you a question. You know, yeah. uh, uh, like girlfriend and I argue, you know, and 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 it, it's always it's usually because it's my crabby day or it's her crabby day. OK, but we we fight. And yet I love her dearly and I couldn't imagine my life without her. Right. I'm saying that. So if she's listening, I'm getting off the hook here. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and I couldn't oh, yeah. I couldn't live without her. I couldn't imagine a life without her. Mm -hmm. And um oh. And yet we we argue like crazy, you know. So uh, you know, I'm wondering if that's just part of the paradigm. You know, that's part of what the relationship is meant to be. I mean, no, nobody winds up crying or being hurt or anything like that. But we, you know, she, she gets very p pissed off at me. Oh, she good. Is she good Acquaintances at getting pissed off? agree. Huh? Friends argue, and a relationship, as I've also heard referenced on Facebook once, is is a, a relationship is a friendship set on fire. I think it's part of the deal, man. Uh, you know, uh, yes, yeah, you're right, Jack. Donna and I, uh, you, you know, uh, <laughs> we, we uh, how should I phrase this delicately in case she's listening? Yeah, we bicker with each other like cats and dogs a okay. lot of the time. Good. Uh, and uh, we are still together only because of the fact one day I ducked the skillet. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, let me let me tell you something. I'll tell you something interesting. You mean that literally? I'll tell you something literally, interesting. She and, threw a skillet at me. And I think and it's, I, it's one of the reasons my, my marriage to Ronnie fell apart was because I grew up in a home with two parents who fought like you've never heard two people fight in your life. I mean, when they fought, they fought hard. But I knew through it all, nobody ever walked out the door, nobody left, you know, and I knew they loved each other. Verbal, physical, both? What? No, just verbal, you know, yes. just verbal yeah. fights. But I, I, mean, I got to split up this full house. Well, uh, well uh, I had a uh, battery go bad on me in the car this afternoon, and the dealership just called me and told me it's ready to pick up, and I need it early in the morning. Oh. So I'm gonna. Oh, okay. Uh, well, goodbye, Phil. It's a Phil free, twenty Phil minutes. Free. Twenty Phil minutes. Free twenty minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Phil, for your participation oh, tonight. Boy. Okay. Bye, bye, <laughs> Phil. Anyway, where were we? Oh yeah. Um, we were talking uh, about uh, your and, and they fought like crazy. <laughs> Here comes Rob. And, and so what I what I was able to, you know, come up with in my in my life was this whole attitude that hey just because you argue doesn't mean the relationship is over with or dead or whatever and yet ronnie came from a family where the minute her parents argued that was it for the marriage and he left Ooh, you know wow. uh, mm. at least i remember the story 
So she and I think her mother maybe was married a couple of times and saw breakups, okay, and people leaving. Uh, since since I had the experience that fighting was not a bad thing, that it was just something that happens in a relationship, uh, and that you're just fighting for you know to make it better, she felt that any time you fought, it was over. Any time something happened wrong, you were it was it was it was to be done with, and. Hmm. You don't love each other anymore because you're fighting. It's Ex like, wait a minute. <laughs> exactly. On. Exactly. You, you mean you and Ronnie never enjoyed makeup sex? I think so, but I can't remember. <laughs> it was a yeah. while ago. It was a long <laughs> time don't, ago. Don't lie to the Black Avenger about that, Bennett. Huh? <laughs> what? what? Best sex I ever had was makeup sex. Yeah, but, you know, I don't want to have to go through the misery of the argument, okay? You know? Lazy. I mean, if, if, if the only way I can have worth good... the effort. If, if the only way I can have good sex is by making up. Yeah. You know. Um, I mean, makeup okay. sex, I have to admit. I mean, the makeup sex I've had in my lifetime, some of it's been very good. How about you, Charlie? Makeup sex good? I believe happy wife, happy life. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay, yeah. fine. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, all I can say is what my uncle told me when I was a young man. He said, even the worst sex you ever had was usually pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, Joe line, a little bit know, of love is better than no love at all. It seems pretty good. Mm hmm? What did you say? I said uh, some some of sometimes when you masturbate it seems pretty seems better than uh, than the worst sex you ever had. Well, especially well, since you don't have to deal with any uh, consequences afterward. Well, the good thing about masturbation it's sex with somebody you really care about. <laughs> sex with someone you love. Is that Woody Allen? With somebody you really know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So. Unless yeah. of course you're schizophrenic. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> I mean, you know, the 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 great thing about masturbation. You know, your hand is happy with a new bottle of Jergens hand lotion. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, your, 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 well just when, don't piss it off. When you get a new bottle of Jergens hand lotion, uh, you buy buying it a present, as it were. <laughs> you know. It gives new me. It gives new meaning to the term Vaseline intensive care. Well, now there that we now that Phil's gone, what kind of an asshole is Donald Trump? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it say Phil left? What's that? Why? Because he's in the building. He had to go pick up his car. Does he do that? No, he had to go pick up his car tonight. Uh, so. But it says, like, I, I see it in uh, uh, Brian's box. Phil left, like a little caption. What? Weird. In Brian's box? Like, you no. know, I can see. Um, I got. I hope I'm calling him the right name. He's got wood paneling there. I, I see, like, a little black. You know, and in white captioning, it says Phil left. No, did you put that up there? I I I, I didn't. Uh, no. uh, okay, somebody's calling using the phone. Who who is this? Is this Tim? This is Tim. Yeah, yeah. hi Tim. How are hey. you? How big an asshole is Donald Trump? Uh, <laughs> well, I'll, I'll give you. A, there's three items to remember. Yeah. Uh, Trump Soho, uh -huh. Bay Rock, and Felix Sater. Uh, read read it on Bloomberg tomorrow by Tim Tim O'Brien. I, I I don't understand it, really it, kind it, of. What, what it's, uh, Felix Cedar was uh, helped put a lot of mafia people away. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and they were they were pumping dumpers on the stock market. They pump up a price, then sell it. You know, real estate pump up the value of a stock. Yeah. But he was involved in getting real estate money from Russia, and it came down. And w w one of the parts he talked about was. They had money coming from Russia, a couple of different place groups of investors in Russia, and they had they had to take it from the FL group, whatever that is, because they had closer ties to Putin. Mm -hmm. So there's been freedom of information by reporters trying to get information from this long investigation. So the hopefully Russian, some of that stuff will come out. I heard about Russian money laundering. Is that what you mean? Yeah, they were involved in Russian money laundering. They were involved mm -hmm. with the mafia. And uh, it had to do with investments in Trump Soho specifically. So we'll see what happens. Did you see where uh, Sessions got a lawyer now? Ses yep. Sessions got a lawyer? Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why? He's, a close, he's a close personal friend. He helped Sessions prepare for his uh, conf confirmation hearings. Uh -huh. uh, but he's, he's, a, he's a Supreme Court attorney. 
when when sessions may actually need a criminal attorney but the, the word on the street is he hired him so he can now have client attorney privilege for anything that this attorney knows about sessions so he won't when be he prepared for the confirmation hearing so we'll see what happens Look, sounds like we're going to have a sounds like we're going to have a west wing in prison <laughs> right, right. Now, I was thinking it's going to be like a, a mob movie where everybody's, you know, got their mob lawyer. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of yeah, just anarchy, of... controlled anarchy. Uh, better call that... Saul, right? <laughs> but Alex, well, to answer... better call Saul. He'd be by, by better attorney. Mm -hmm. that... Alex, to answer your question about what kind of an asshole Donald Trump is, yeah. reminded of what Winston Churchill said about Stalin. Really? Mm. And that was, he's the kind of man that gives buggery a bad name. <laughs> okay. Okay. Ooh. So, uh, but anyway. How about, what, what would you say about Putin now that you saw episode four? I, I didn't see episode four yet, to be honest with you. Okay. My take is, uh, he's, a, he's, a, he's a Bernie Madoff, because Bernie Madoff, remember, had people from Hollywood eating out of his hand. Yeah, yeah, and that's why I see I see him as a as a you know an expert Bernie Madoff on the world. Another stage. slimy character, huh? Yeah, power. It's all about power. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's why he's there, huh? That's why he's there. He was able to he's able to keep power, and he even when he his term limits are up, he went off and came back again. In, as a different uh, ran you know, its prime minister, right? Yeah. Yep. Right, moved so around, but still was able to come back. You know, because that's what he wants to do. What else did he do? Yeah. That's why. And that's why Trump idolizes him. Yeah, if you if you went against Putin, they they just made a film of you. And that's why that's Trump so idolizes him. <laughs> well, it, uh, uh, that's uh, certainly uh, interesting. Uh, on why Trump idolizes him. I, I, I think that that was the one thing Trump was right about when he said he was an effective leader. You oh, know? yeah. I, I mean, it's always effective. A, and he also it's easy to be effective. kills people you, that aren't. Yeah. Well, it's when more everybody's than, afraid it's, of it, you. And, it's more than just being effective. I mean, he knows how to do the job. Okay. And uh, if he doesn't, there's no one to tell him he's fucking otherwise. up. <laughs> So, you know, think about that. That's what I mean when, when, when you were saying how, you know, you, were, you had like a different respect for him. I watched the whole thing with the, with, with the whole feeling of there's no, there's no one I could ask to corroborate anything he says so he comes across looking like this really good guy. Well, here's how you have to watch that interview. And, and I think it's the only way you can take the interview is you take the interview for what it is, and that is his version of what he believes to be the truth. It's kind of like when I hear Trump, I'm listening to Trump's version of what he believes to be the truth. Now, he may not be telling me the truth, or it may be the truth as he believes it to be, but at least for the first time I got to hear Putin's side of the story. Now, that doesn't mean I have to believe everything he said or take it at face value, but at least I'm hearing what he has to say. And that's Everybody what I thought. Was the nobody argues it, like Rob's saying. Nobody, nobody challenges it. Exactly. So, well, yeah. Stone wasn't going to challenge it because I, I, read, I saw an interview talking about his interviews with Putin. He said they were because there were two or three different interviews over a certain number of months, he didn't like want to piss him off. You know? Of course not. So he's well, trying to keep yeah. it relatively... He Absolutely. wasn't going to really be, I, I, yeah, you know, I, I, adversarial. I, th I think this is where the press, when they criticized Stone's interviewing technique, were full of shit. And that is when they when they kept saying, "Oh well, he never challenged him." Well, I got to tell you, why do you have to? You, yes, when you're interviewing someone and you want to get something out of them, challenging them doesn't exactly open them up to telling right. you stuff. If you if you watch the interview. By Stone not pursuing stuff, but just letting him keep on talking, he just talked and talked and talked and talked and talked. And no, I get that. Stuff. I get that part. But the part, the other part is what yeah. I think Rob was saying was the fact that no one, not just leave Stone out of it, but no one behind him or part of his cabinet or anybody in his cabinet ever challenges him. 
Well, nobody. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, there's nobody that challenged Trump in his cabinet either. Yeah, I was just going to say, well, you got the media yeah. doesn't challenge. And that's the scary part because we live in the United States. We don't live in Russia, right? Right. right. It's scary that we can't challenge. It's scary that the what was it day before yesterday that the, that no cameras or recording devices were allowed into the. Uh, to the to the briefing with uh, with the Spicer briefing, right? Yeah. yeah. What kind of crap is that? This is America. How does nope. anybody stand for that, Republican or Democrat? How do you stand for that? Well, they, they're not going to. This is one for fascism. Fascism. Yeah, absolutely. Did, did you see that? And movie? that's when I first watched that interview with Putin. I thought, wow, this is a pretty good guy. He's smart. Gee, maybe a guy like this would be make a good president. But then I started thinking about all the other stuff, which is that he controls everything. He controls the message, and no one is to challenge him, and he right. knows his message. So, right. you know, he's going to look great. He just by you know, yeah, if it I him, him. but my question is, you know, with the kind of people we put in office in this country, and especially considering the current administration. Uh, isn't the same true about us? I mean, isn't isn't Trump constantly trying to control this message? I mean, the, fa the fact that they won't let anybody, they won't let the public in on the hearings for health care. They're right. not allowing. And, and, they're not. And they, did you see that thing where somebody challenged? I can't remember who. And said, "Well, are you going to, or aren't you going to?" And the guy was like, "Well, da da ba da ba da." Yeah. It's like they don't want to let the public in on anything. They just want to spring right. it on them and say, "Okay, that's the way it is, pal." You know. And again, that's, that's what I don't understand about how how a guy like Phil or anybody who's a Trump supporter can support the kinds of things that are happening. Do they not believe it? Do they, when they hear that the, the press conference was closed to the fact that you couldn't you know, video it or, or record it, how does anybody, I don't care who you support, yeah. support that? Forget well, about anything else. It's, it's, it's real simple. It's real simple. Mm -hmm. There's always a fairly good sized portion of the population of any country that wants an authoritarian figure running things. Yeah. Because to think for yourself is pretty goddamn scary for some of these people. Mm -hmm. And I think it's I think that's true for Phil. He gets his little download of Trump Meister information and he runs with it. And speaking about hey. running, I got to run it ready to do my own show. <laughs> Alex, give right. Ronnie my regards. Yeah, well, when and, I when I talk and, to her, which may be quite a while, you know. <laughs> You know, you talk to her, you know, tell her I said hello, and I think about her often. Yeah. And and I'll see anybody that wants to see me here in yeah, Well, look, we have all, the, all the these people for you to choose from. Yeah. I know Brian will call you. That I know. That's for sure. Well, Brian is I'll my... I'll probably call in 10 or 15. I yeah. The only reason why I was absent large portions of last week was because I had a death in the family. I was oh, all fucked oh, up. That's too oh, too Brian is my illegitimate child from another <laughs> union, you know. Yeah. You can see the family resemblance. Pretty soon we're going to get some suntan. Every looks. time I open okay. my mouth. Well, yes. get, the eyes. get lost, Jack. We'll see you later. Later, buddy. Bye-bye. Okay. He'll be here with the intersection, which is uh, right after uh, this program uh, disappears into the ether, as it were. Uh, okay. All right. Everybody's looking pretty I good. I came in so late, I need to vent. Maybe I'll go on his show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There you go. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, but but all I'm saying about the Putin interview is, is that I, I was somewhat bothered by the reaction of the 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 regular press in their in how they accepted that interview as they said, oh, that's uh, unprofessional, and he didn't challenge him, and blah blah blah. And well, to begin with, he did challenge him in a lot of in a lot of the cases in this in this interview. Uh, but but basically, he was there to hold a conversation and hear what this guy had to say. And I felt somewhat privileged that I could get in on that conversation and that I was being able, for instance, did you see the part, Rob, where he actually goes into the into that uh, uh, war room, so to speak? Which ep I've only watched the first. The I didn't third, see uh, the third episode. No. He actually, actually the gets third to one? go. 
it gets to go into like I guess you would you call it the the like the situation room situation room, room. yeah right and he showed how it worked and how he could talk to somebody in Afghanistan and then he talked to somebody in uh, Syria and uh, he was very open you know here look, look all these monitors none of them were turned off you know uh, mm-hmm. here I've seen interviews where they go through the situation room and they have to turn off all the monitors before the cameras can come through well yeah. I think part of that might be that it was going to be broadcast at such a later date that what was there probably wasn't relevant or no one would have been able that, to. That, that could be. But what I'm saying is, for whatever reason, he made, it, he made it seem as though he was more accessible than you ever believed he would be. Well, and I, again, I, I think a lot of that is by, by design. It's all optics. Trust. It's all optics. But he knew how to do it better than Trump Oh, was. yeah. Mm-hmm. He's, yeah. Well, know? just because <laughs> Trump is... Trump is 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 just a dangerous individual who is extremely flawed in his personality. He yeah. is very flawed. You know, I wouldn't have. Uh, for he can't instance, even fake it. Trump can't even fake it for more than says, ten minutes. Well, Melania, it's, yeah. it's, it's the old line. Melania, Melanie, whatever the fuck her name is. Malaria. I got a dispatcher name. Ma- Ma- Somebody Ma- I work with his name Melanie. That's why. Malaria. Oh. Malaria. 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 Yeah. Malaria. Yeah. Melanoma. Now, here's, a, here's the thing. That, that in the case of Donald uh, Trump, uh, he is the prime uh, uh, person that I could give the following advice to, and that is, if you can't be sincere, at least fake it. Fake it. <laughs> but he can't. He doesn't. And that's what I mean. He's, his personality is such that he can't even do that. He, you I never, don't know how. You never get a sense of sincerity. Right. You know, never, ever get a sense of sincerity. Your it. advice is kinder than mine, which would be die. <laughs> die. Eat shit and die. Well, there was one thing, as I say, I said the other day, that Putin said in the interview that was very telling. He said that when asked who did he hope would win the presidential race, his answer was it doesn't really matter. Either person, no matter who becomes president, the outcome will be the same. Yeah. Yeah. And Although I don't agree with yeah, that. Yeah, Jeff. I used to remember that a lot of people who I used oh, to I, call sorry. vice presidents, and 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 I always said that the, that their answer was everything is better than expected, and I think that's Trump's strategy. Everything has been had wonderful and is going to be better. Other than that, he well, has nothing to say. Well, obviously, he learned the big lie that Goebbels and Hitler invented, which is you say something enough times and eventually it becomes the truth. Yeah. You know? And You, you know what his second role yeah, is? He's not doing uh, a very uh, good job. Y- yes, Tim, what? His second role is if you get attacked, you attack the other person a hundred times harder. Right. Yeah. That's his two rules. Yeah. But also, it's it, it. There's a desire, as it was with Hitler as well, to discredit the press. For instance, you know, uh, Hitler uh, made it sh- made sure that the populace didn't believe what the press had to say about him. You know, just yes, John. Uh, I would suggest. Well, most of you probably know this, but looking up narcissistic personality syndrome on WebMD, I looked it up because I have my my dad's second wife is a textbook case of this. Everything is related to her. Yeah. Nothing, you know, you can't if you come in, you're you're in her space, not ours. Right. And it just it just every I, I looked at it for her and I was reading it's like, holy cow, this sounds like Trump. <laughs> it's the same thing. You know, absolutely not. It, well, you have it's, to. It's him you, or yeah. nothing. But you, you have know. to. That what his co-author said about him, the guy that helped him write the book. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Art of the Deal. Art of the Deal. Oh, yeah. yeah that guy that's was... what he said about him. Well, here, here's the other thing you have to always remember about Donald Trump, and that is his privileged background. And so no, all true. that narcissism is is magnified through that. You know, right. that he didn't, he, he didn't grow up normally like you and I. He grew up uh, being a freak. Basically, yeah, knows. you know, and neither did my dad's second wife. She was the she was the daughter of the uh, senator uh, of a senator from Wyoming, you know, and lived in New York and lived in Washington was a relatively, you know, hot shit uh, psychologist in Washington. She was a very, a very smart, but she had she had the brains and she had the, the background right. and the people and the connections. And it, you know, and, and therefore her thing ruled. <laughs> 
Oh, hey, I want to thank us. everybody for joining us tonight. Charlene Martinez, uh, Rob Alfano, uh, Brian, John Rockwell, uh, Ke uh, Kevin, of course, Jeff Stein, Anthony, Tony, Magno, of yes. course, uh, Phil Meyer as well. And uh, did we have one other person here Some, somewhere? Along? John, and far as far as your uh, that second wife, that or that second uh, mother or whatever. That's yeah, uh, right. Yeah, uh, she's so. In other words, she's so full of shit that every time she vomits, she has to use a sheet of toilet paper to wipe her mouth. Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> okay. Well, with that, I think we'll Good call Brian. it quits. Everybody, wave goodbye to, to the rest of the world, and hopefully, we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye bye. Anyway, that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That's all she wrote for the um, for the citizens panel and for uh, the uh, ramble for tonight. Uh, next is, of course, you know, I've told you before a hundred times, and I'll say it again: uh, the, the intersection. And then, of course, at one o'clock in the morning, it's connections. I'm Alex Bennett. Hey, we'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her. Tell her I love her, okay?